My name is Cindy Callahan, and I am a middle grade author best known for Just Add Magic. Uh, that's two books in the series, Just Add Magic 1 and 2, and that was developed into an Amazon original series that went on for five seasons and was nominated for an Emmy. It's a super exciting project, um, and another nine books thereafter. Um, I'm also well known for my Lost In books. That's a set of five standalones that are co-branded um, about a 13-year-old girl who goes on an adventure in a different foreign or US city. Um, yeah, and that's me in a nutshell. I've got all kinds of, of questions for you. I love a good origin story. And I know that you were a reluctant reader early on, although you wrote a, you wrote a play in the third grade, right? You really did your homework, yes. And as soon as you held up your fifth grade book, um, that Vermont, you know, I knew I wanted to mention that. So my first big, big project was in third grade, and at that time, a very popular movie was Grease, and I wrote the sequel to Grease uh, together with my father, who helped me type it. Um, and then it gets even better. My third grade class, with the help of an amazing music teacher, put the production on. Uh, at school. So really exciting. Um, to sort of tie the world full circle, I was recently at that school, that same elementary school for a, a visit, and I still have a copy of the original typewritten play that I bring with me and I show them and I gave the presentation in the same gym in front of the same stage that the play um, was put on. Thereafter, I also took a took a a picture of a, a portion of it and I put it on my Facebook page and I was surprised how many people from third grade I'm still connected to in some way and there was a handful of people who commented that either they remembered it or they were in it they remembered what part they played um, but yes that was my first big project um, and thereafter I wrote all kinds of, of different things from, you know, melodramatic poetry to legal thrillers. But as you said, I, I was a reluctant reader and I don't call myself a reluctant reader anymore. I call myself a lazy reader. Uh, I have a what used to be a 25 page rule. I've kind of inched it up to a 50 page rule. Um, if I am not fully absorbed in a book by 25 to 50 pages, I don't finish it. And I, I don't finish a, a big percentage of books, um, not because they're not good books, but because they're not grabbing me. Um, and it could be my mood, um, or it could just be that it's not the style of book that I prefer. And I do the same thing with audiobooks. Um, I subscribe to Scribd and I get a ton of audiobooks for free. I listen to a lot of audiobooks in a week. And um, there's a good handful that I start and I don't finish because it's just not not working for me. But long answer to a very short question of, yes, I was a reluctant reader. And that first project was in third grade. No, I think that's a, a very good rule to not finish um, books that aren't of interest. You know, I make exception, of course, if the author's coming on this show. <laughs> and and I never mentioned that the book did not interest me at first. Um, but uh, but they're coming on the show, we, we plow through. Or if the book uh, comes highly regarded, highly recommended, and I think there's a chance that I'm just missing something and I need to be a better reader. Uh, but certainly by uh, page 100, if I even if you know the world's best reviewed book, if you still haven't grabbed me, then you know I'm not getting I'm not getting credit for a grade here. This is a, my fun time. <laughs> I I, com I completely agree, and there are many books that are either recommended by people or many people, and sometimes very very well reviewed books. And I'm like, I'm just, it's it's not for me. It's it's not you. It's me. Like it's definitely me. It's not my thing. And my reading pile that I of things I want to read is just too tall to spend time on something that I'm not loving. Well, and inevitably, unfortunately, there, there's not unfortunately, we are blessed that there are so many books in the world that nobody could read them all in one lifetime. So why suffer through one? Uh, with with I, I'm thinking of an exception. I did finish Twilight. Uh, it did not grab me. I was not interested, mm -hmm. but I appreciated all the craft that went into it by the time I was done. And I thought, well, that was good for me to have put myself through that experience, despite not being a, a particularly pleasant one. And I, and I liked Twilight. I did read, I read all of the books and I, um, and, and I liked them. So 
It's all, oh, it's no, it's all a, it's a wonderful series. I can absolutely see why it was so popular. Um, yeah. I just don't think Stephanie Meyer wrote it with uh, uh, middle-aged white men in, in mind. <laughs> I don't think that's sure. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I found it was a little bit uh, creepy that that Edward has been around for a hundred years and is still in the, interested in uh, high school girls. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. You know that. I don't want to go on too many tangents. The, the movie Dirty Dancing, you know, great movie, classic. That always bothered me. I felt that Patrick Swayze looked or was just too much older than, than Jennifer Grey. And it always, that movie has always creeped me out. Fair enough. Although if if, if, if you look for it, uh, esteemed audience, somebody mashed up the um, intro to The Muppet Show with the end dance of, uh, of of Dirty Dancing, it might be the greatest internet mashup ever created. Oh, funny, I'd have to look for that. You know, I'll link to it in the show notes. That's how much I want an esteemed audience to enjoy <laughs> this incredible mashup. Okay. 